and welcome to a lecture on wavelength division multiplexing learning outcomes by the end of this session student will be able to illustrate the concept of wavelength division multiplexing before we start the topic you may pause here the video and try to answer this question what are the different ways to increase the channel capacity by installing new fiber the channel capacity could be increased but the high cost associated with the installation of new fiber this solution to increase the channel capacity is somewhat impractical the other way to increase the channel capacity is by increasing the bit rate up to a certain limit the bit rate could be increased to increase the channel capacity but beyond that certain limit we need a very fast operating optical switches optical sources and detectors so it is also a not a good way to increase the channel capacity up to a limit by increasing bit rate the channel capacity could be increased the other way to increase the channel capacity is using time division multi multiplexing and the last way to increase the channel capacity is by using multiple wavelengths on a single fiber this way gives the rise to wavelength division multiplexing concept the optical fiber links around 1980s consisted of point to point connections signals from different light sources are used on separate and uniquely assigned to optical fibers these systems greatly underutilize the large bandwidth capacity of a optical fiber as the spectral width of a typical laser source occupies only a narrow slice of optical bandwidth so it is underutilizing the remaining part of the optical bandwidth because it is unused the first use of the wavelength division multiplexing was to upgrade the capacity of installed point to point transmission links with the arrival of high quality signals with extremely narrow spectral emission width which is less than 1 nanometer many independent wavelength channels could be placed on a same fiber which are spaced less than a nanometer apart from each other the this technology of combining the number of independent information carrying wavelengths onto the same fiber is known as wavelength division multiplexing the use of wavelength division multiplexing allows a dramatic increase in the capacity of optical fibers compared to the original simple point to point link that only carried a single wavelength in a fiber the applications of wavelength division multiplexing techniques are found in all levels of communication links including long distance terrestrial and undersea transmission systems metro networks and fiber to the premises networks let's see the advantages of wavelength division multiplexing wavelength division multiplexing is scalable you can easily increase the number of channels to increase the channel capacity in the same way you can decrease when it is not required wdm system or technique is transparent each channel can have its own data formats the data formats are independent of transmission protocol used the data can be analog or digital or synchronous and asynchronous the another advantage is wavelength switching WDM allows for reconfigurable optical layers the wavelength multiplexing is done by an array of components that are wavelength dependent and perform various functions these are the some advantages of WDM systems let's see the operational principle of wavelength division multiplexing here in this diagram you can see a typical wavelength division multiplexing system which has tunable sources then some amplifiers multiplexer 
demultiplexer and receiver. These sources generate a monochromatic light of wavelength lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n and these monochromatic light signals are fed through the n fibers to this wavelength multiplexer. Then this multiplexer combines the monochromatic light signals with wavelength lambda 1 to lambda n into a polychromatic signal by the process of multiplexing. Then that polychromatic signal is launched into a single optical fiber which passes through the different amplifiers on the receiver side the polychromatic signal is separated into different multiple monochromatic signals of wavelength lambda 1, lambda 2 and so on up to lambda n. This work of separation is done by demultiplexer. The design of demultiplexer is such that the center wavelength is same as the original wavelength means the center of the wavelength is lambda 1 for the first channel, it is lambda 2 for the second channel and for the nth channel the center wavelength is lambda n which is the same on the multiplexer side. The implementation of wavelength division multiplexing networks require a variety of passive and active devices. The passive devices requires no external control for their operations. The passive devices are mainly used to split and combine or to tap off some optical signals or optical power. The active devices can be controlled electronically or optically. The active devices include tunable sources and optical amplifiers. Okay, let us see a special case of wavelength division multiplexing. A special case of wavelength division multiplexing is known as dense WDM. Here in this figure you can see the EDFA amplifiers and a chromatic dispersion compensator. The use of erabium doped fiber amplifier and dispersion compensator are required for long haul dense WDM system to offset any optical signal power losses caused by optical wavelength multiplexer and other passive optical devices. Here if you compare this diagram of dense WDM system with a typical WDM system then you can clearly find out the introduction of erabium doped fiber amplifier and chromatic dispersion compensator. These two are used to offset the power losses caused by the wavelength division multiplexer and other op passive optical devices. A rapid and reliable communication network are important in every sector such as business, entertainment, government sector and etc. Therefore, it is difficult for telecommunication industry to meet the increasing demands of bandwidth with the time. Dense WDM systems use narrow channel spacing and can therefore accommodate several hundred wavelength channels on a single fiber. Instead of using different wavelengths specifically from the three wavelength windows of 850 nanometer that is 8.5 micrometer, 300 nanometer and 1550 nanometer. The different wavelengths can be chosen which are nearer to each other. In late 1990s the minimum spacing achieved was 25 gigahertz which is equivalent to a difference in channel wavelength of 0.6 nanometers. Generally, if the spacing between the channels is below 200 gigahertz, then the system is called as dense wavelength division multiplexing. Let us see the advantages of dense 
वेवलेंथ डिवीजन मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग ओवर वेवलेंथ डिवीजन मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग टिपिकल डब्ल्यू डी एम सिस्टम मोर क्लोजली स्पेस चैनल्स गिवज राइज टू द हाइयर कैपेसिटी ऑपरेशन इन डेंस डब्ल्यू डी एम द कैपेसिटी ऑफ द फाइबर कैन बी इंक्रीज सिक्सटीन फोल्ड्स दिस न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ डेंस डब्ल्यू डी एम अलॉन्ग विद द नेटवर्क मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम एंड ऑप्टिकल एड ड्रॉप मल्टीप्लेक्सर अनेबल द सिस्टम डिजाइनर्स टू मीट द इंक्रीजिंग डिमांड ऑफ द चैनल कैपेसिटी एट मच लोअर प्राइस द इराबियम डोपड फाइबर एम्पलीफायर्स कैन एम्पलीफाई ऑल द चैनल्स इन अ डेंस डब्ल्यू डी एम सिस्टम साइमल्टेनियसली सो दिस सेव द एडिशनल रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द इक्विपमेंट्स एंड इन टर्न इट सेव द कॉस्ट एज वेल दीज आर द रेफरेंसेस यूज थैंक यू